Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. It's T1 Glistener Elf here again. Uh, first of all, before I get started with my deck tech, uh, check out the sliver. It's nice and blue. It fits for the deck I'm going to show you. And now, check out Noble Hierarch. As a lot of you probably know, I did not go to the GP, unfortunately. I wasn't able to. Uh, but a friend of mine, Paul Sauter, I don't think he'd mind me bringing up his name, he came in 41st. I believe it was for the event, 41st or 42nd, and uh, he is just a really nice guy, and and let me have this. So shout outs to you, Paul. First of all, you are just that awesome. You are just one cool dude. All right, now with the deck tech itself. All right, but I had to show off the sliver because yeah, it's a blue, it's a blue deck. So mono blue infect. We're obviously going to be running four Blighted Agents. Gotta love this guy. Uh, best creature in the deck, with one possible exception. Uh, it depends on what we're playing uh, against. So I'm running four Icker Claw Mirrors as well. Uh, it's okay. It gets you by. Uh, I'm sure that if you've seen a lot of Infect deck techs, or if you've seen Infect in action, Mono Green runs Icker Claw Mirror. You probably know what this does. Uh, it's just nice for being, it's not unblockable, but it gets by creatures fairly easy, easily nonetheless due to its ability. It is an artifact, so it dies, though, so do be wary of that. We need a bit more room, so let me scooch you guys over just a bit. Next, a one of Necropede. Just a one of. We like the ability to potentially kill something else. Uh, in a perfect world, we get a two for one with this. We lose it in battle, and then we kill something with one toughness. Uh, occasionally it comes up. I keep it in there uh, because I can tutor it up. Wait, what? Yes, you'll see. Uh, now here is the other creature that I think might actually be the best. Maybe Blighted Agent, maybe Ink Moth Nexus. I like being able to dodge sorcery speed removal like Wrath Effects, Flame Slash, so on and so forth. I do very much like that ability, and Ink Moth Nexus is also a land. <laughs> um, comes in handy. It, it flies. Occasionally that matters for the ability to block, for instance. Um, issue, though, is that it doesn't... An issue is that you can't equip on your opponent's turn, and so, unfortunately, it trying to block a flyer means that it's going to be a 1-1. One -one. Uh, next, we have a couple of spell skites. Uh, because we're running Infect, <laughs> We want to be able to protect what we're doing. Um, makes enough sense, I'm sure. Uh, so what are we doing with all these little creatures? Well, for one thing, we're making them bigger. I'm running four Rune Chanters pikes. Sadly, no improvement to the toughness, but plus X plus O and first strike, based on the number of instants and sorceries that we have in our yard. And boy, do we have a lot of instants and sorceries. We're getting there soon enough. Now. I could try something else. Right now I'm running a one of sort of Fire and Ice in the main. Uh, I do very much like it. It's three mana though. It's slow and it can't be tutored. What do I mean by tutor? I, just hold on. Hold your horses for one moment. You'll see. Uh, but I would say that in what we're doing, this is the most powerful sword strategy. Uh, Feast and Famine's also okay, especially for hitting combo decks and allowing us to tap down and then still have counterspell uh, mana up for uh, our opponent's turn. Right now I'm trying Fire and Ice. An issue with the deck though is that you are disincentivized from running, say, Spectra Flight or uh, Disrupting, not Disrupting, uh, Distortion Strike, if you're running sort of Fire and Ice. They don't play well with each other. All right, so that's our, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to win on the ground or uh, in the air or Neither. Oh, we're trying to win with creatures, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and how do we get there? Well, I would very much like to counter absolutely everything that my opponent is doing. I am, when I play a deck like this, I am just that guy. Uh, so first of all, I want to play Force of Will. <laughs> this card is Force of Will. No, no, certainly not. It's a lot more restrictive. You don't lose the life, but you won't guarantee that you'll counter basically everything. Uh, however, what we care about is that we're countering removal. Most of the time, that's what we need to counter. Uh, bolt, or path, or something as such on one of our creatures. Spell Sky is in there for that reason. I'm running two Disrupting Shoals for that reason as well. 
in the way late game we can actually start countering the real threats but for right now I, I only have two actually so maybe I'd run more but since I only have two I'm afraid that's all that I can show you next four spell pierces essentially the same reason some number of these could be spell snare feel more than free um, I'm trying to counter my opponents lightning bolts paths helixes so on and so forth uh, against my creatures, and I find that these do a, a speci an especially good job of it. And a lot of hate cards in general, uh, if they're playing creatures, I think that generally we can we can win that race. We play our creature and then hold up counter magic, and our equipments and some other buffs that we have that we'll get to in a sec should help us to win that race. Um, maybe not though. You'll see. You'll see. Four mana leak. <laughs> goes without saying, I suppose. Uh, only three remand. Uh, it is as many as I have, but I'm actually not terribly keen. Remand is actually very bad against removal, uh, spot removal. Uh, it's okay against, say, Murderer's Cut, for instance, when you're actually getting value because they're losing cards in their graveyard. Lightning Bolt, not so much. They probably have another red up, and they're probably just going to cast it right back. Remand is more for getting value off hitting Cut and Tassiger, um, for Gurmog Angler, for giant spells where uh, it essentially, I don't want to say it reads Time Walk, that, but it looks a lot like Time Walk when you, when you play it on those. This is what I mean by tutors. I run currently one Muddle the Mixture in the main board. And perhaps in the main board that's as many as I want to have. When we get to sideboards, well, you'll see. So. Counter instant or sorcery for blue blue. Okay, so it, it looks like a gimped counter spell. Transmute. Beautiful, beautiful transmute. A there's quite a bit in my deck that's actually CMC2. And so being able to transmute for, just so far, Blighted Agent, Icar Claw Mirror, Necropede, Spell Sky, Rune Chanter's Pike, Disrupting Shult, yes, I can I can go transmute for Force of Will. Uh Mandalik, Remand. <laughs> It's silly, it seems, but yeah, you can do that. And so I'm trying to play a little bit of utility. When we get to the sideboard, that will be especially important, especially evident. Uh, next, my four Gitaxian probes. Um, I have the evident promos because I bought in effect before it was cool. T1 Glistener Elf, such a hipster. No, you, you know, I'm T1 Glistener Elf for a reason. I love Infect, and I've been playing these pretty much ever since I started playing Infect. They were much, much cheaper back in the day, and I hold on to them. Very, very nice. Uh, and then lastly, uh, similarly, by the way, I bought these before they got stupidly expensive. If you can't afford them, Sleight of Hand works as well. Um, Thought Scour is fine. Thought Scour will give you uh, hits off Rune Chanter's Pike. So don't worry about not having Serum Visions. Uh, it might actually, in some ways, it might be better to not have this here ambitious. Maybe, maybe. I mean, there, there are other options is what I'm trying to say. Um, next. Next we have four Cathedrals of War. We're moving into the land base. I include Inkmoth Nexus with the creatures because a lot of times that's what it feels like. Cathedral of War. Oh, you are an interesting card. If I'm doing anything on turn one and it's not holding up mana for spell pierce um, or cantripping, I'm probably just playing a Cathedral of War tapped. It's a land that gives us Exalted. Sadly, though, it comes in tapped. Uh, and that can be a bit of an issue with the deck. I'll let you know, I'm running 22 lands. Eight of them are colorless. Now, that means that in the end, we're running the same number of blue sources that Rug Delver is. Actually, I just think Delver. Uh, well, no, not all Delver decks, I'm sure, but certainly the Rug Delver list, Timur Delver, I suppose, uh, is running. So 14 sources, and that's uh, that's pretty minimal in a deck that doesn't have Ponder and Brainstorm. We have Gitaxian Probe and Serum Visions. Maybe the land count is too low. On the other hand, you don't need many lands for this. You want to start hitting your bullets after you've established a creature on turn two. Oboro, Palace in the Clouds, just as a one-of, essentially for the same reasons that Tron is running it as a one-of. Uh, usually it's just better than another island. 
Uh, it doesn't like Blood Moon, to be sure. Um, and it plays around Tech Edge, Ghost Quarter. Uh, it, you can do stuff with it, to be sure. Now, <laughs> I feel more than free to just make that an island. I don't suspect that Aboro is a terribly cheap card. I certainly wouldn't put it in the 25 cent bin. Uh, so make that another island if you want. I do it because occasionally the utility might come up. Now, lastly, islands. 10, 11, 12, 13. I had to make sure. I had to make sure I had the right number. 13. So we're at 22. Uh, you may have seen when I use my, uh, my basic forest, I use the... I'm worried about mispronouncing it, so it's spelled W-A-L-D which is German for forest. Wald, I believe it is. Uh, forgive me if that's not the correct pronunciation. And the reason I do that is because, to me, it's my favorite forest. It's the misprint forest from German 3rd edition, German revised, uh, where they put a plains art and a white background on it. I do that because it's my favorite forest. This is my favorite island, notwithstanding the snow islands, which I don't have enough of. Uh, my favorite plains, period, is snow-covered plains, and thankfully I have enough of them. Um, my favorite swamp is Guru Swamp, which I'm never going to have enough of, to be sure. And I don't know that I have a favorite mountain. I'm still debating that. Um, I take this one because I am apparently 12 years old. And that is funny to me. So I apologize in advance for any snickering in any of the games you see with this deck. Uh, <laughs> so here's my main board. Uh, you may notice that some of my videos don't include this exact list. I did try out two sleight of hands in place of Disrupting Shoal. I think that that was a big mistake, personally. I think that that was a big mistake. Being able to, when you're tapped out on turn two, being able to protect one of your creatures is crucial to the deck. You aren't running very many. You are running effectively 13 creatures that actually can go get in and beat down. Uh, counting the Inkmoth Nexus, not counting the Spell Sky. Although, Rune Chandra's Pike Spell Sky does make that possible, <laughs> actually. Um, so, you really need to protect what creatures you have, and I would submit that this is the way to go about doing it. Um, being able to, while tapped out, still counter the removal spells. No, no. To the sideboard. We're going to start off. I have, actually, let me let me give me just one quick moment. I'm going to run through here and reorder the sideboard because there's something a little bit different about mine. Probably should have done this beforehand, but I did not think this would be that consequential. I imagine, though, looking back at it, that this is. So we're going to start off with uh, the muddle the mixture package. First, we have. As single echoing truth, a lot of things are going to be singletons. Uh, feel more than free to disagree, but because I can go and tutor for them, I think that single is fine. Uh, so echoing truth, uh, to be sure it comes in against big delve creatures where you're not just bouncing them, you're actually keeping them from being... Perhaps it's to a, the game is to a late enough state where they can just cast it right back. Oftentimes, however, that is not the case. Uh, set you right here. Uh, and by the way, deck list in the description, so even though you can't see the sideboard, uh, you know that it's there. Or, better yet, let's see if we can just work this out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Aha! Okay. So there we go, Echo and Truth. Now, there is a one of Flash Freeze, counter red or green spell. Uh, I like to think of this as the opposite of uh, guttural response. <laughs> Next, we have a single Hercules Recall. Uh, Shoutouts to uh, my good friend Jared, who uh, a link to his channel is in the description right now. Uh, go and check it out. He does bad idea drafting. He let me borrow this, uh, and that is really cool, and I am giving it back to you right after this. Uh, so don't worry, I have not forgotten. Um, next, we have a couple of negates. Tutorable but more than one, just because I think that this card is that good. Uh, just, it hits so much. It does, it does. Oh, I may not have enough room if I do it. Yeah, let's do it this way. 
a single snapback. I love pitch spells. If you haven't noticed, I love pitch spells. Uh, feels a little bit like days. What they're do it's two mana, or it's free if you pitch something. Well, not pitch something. Days is return it to hand, this is pitch. Maybe this is what happens when unsummon force of will and days get together. And I don't want to know how that happens, but <laughs> let's not think about that too much. Let's let's just move right along, shall we? Uh, next, we have a single spreading seas. I I would very much like to have something like Ghost Quarter or Tech Edge, but I'm already running eight colorless sources in a 22 land deck. Uh, plus, neither of those can be tutored for, transmuted for, with muddle the mixture. So spreading seas is my way to go about hitting Tron, hitting Scape Shift. Um, just whatever the case might be, uh, something that I can use to, and I can get some value out of that as well. Something I can use to disrupt lands. I don't like tokens. You can use the Echoing Truth as well to fight tokens, but Ratchet Bomb is the best answer that we have, I believe. Um, you can't run engineered explosives or something as such, you are monochromatic. Ratchet Bomb may be a bit slow, but against tokens, it's perfectly fine where it is against other decks that are very low to the ground. Um, something like Collected Elves, perhaps, or Burn. You are more than okay with X for wanting them, where X is some ridiculous number. I run two Sun Droplets. Not the one, because uh, Burn is so fast that I need one of, oh, excuse me. I need one of these out fairly early on, and I'm worried that if I'm just muddling for a single one, that's too slow. So I'd like to improve my chances of getting one when it matters, as early in the game as absolutely possible. Okay, that is very, very crooked. I hope nobody is OCD watching this. Lastly, a single Thorn of Amethyst for, of course, Storm decks. Uh, that includes Ad Nauseam, but especially Pyromancer Storm, where this card often just reads, they lose the game. Yes, there is such a thing as wear and tear, to be sure. Uh, and other such hate cards. But if we can resolve this and keep Counterspell back up, then we should be in quite a good shape. Uh, and so that's... that's there. Fighting Storm, as it does so well. Now lastly, four cards to go. I did count that correctly. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Two Dispels. Maybe this is not right. Maybe I just need ridiculously cheap answers so that I can play a turn 2 Blighted Agent or turn 3 Blighted Agent and with blue left, Dispel. Maybe that's right. Or maybe, maybe, some more Muddle the Mixtures. They counter more, they're a little bit more expensive, and they make this tutor board more accessible. Feel more than free to disagree. I actually do not have any more Muddles the mixture, Muddle the Mixtures. Otherwise, I'd probably run uh, another one or two. Uh, I keep these in the, even if they were, I would probably keep them in the sideboard, partially because the counter ability on Muddle the Mixture means so little against some decks. Fair number of decks, actually. And partially because um, access to the tutor board means more in the sideboard, obviously. In game one, I'm getting another creature out, Spell Sky to protect a creature, Rune Chanter's Pike. Uh, to go for the kill, or a counterspell just to solidify my advantage. Uh, however, in a sideboarded game, I, also, I can do all of that, plus I can go and get these bullets. So perhaps Muddle the Mixture should be in that slot instead of Dispel. I would love to hear your thoughts about it uh, in the comment section, or on Twitter, whatever the case may be. Uh, now, Mindbreak Trap. Another Storm Hate card. I would very much appreciate the ability to hit uh, any Storm deck while I'm tapped out as well. I, one Thorn of Amethyst is all that I have. That is part of the reason why Mindbreak Trap is in. But also, I know that they are, if I'm on the draw, they might just be too fast. I know that it's possible for them to kill you on turn two. Uh, there are several other decks where being able to exile the spell off the stack is more important than countering. Any deck like uh, Scape Shift, they bring in Besiege you against me. They, of course, certainly will. They don't care about life, because I'm Infect, and they need to play around counter spells. Mindbreak Trap is consequential for them. Um, so Mindbreak Trap is a sideways answer to Scape Shift. It is an answer to Storm, 
uh, in addition to the, uh, the aforementioned storm, uh, thorn of amethyst. Plus, they can't wear tarot. And lastly, a single sword of feasted famine to fight combo decks generally. Uh, again, hit a card in their hand and allows me to untap so that I can go and hold up counterspell magic uh, for later. And I think that that's important enough. Ob ob le 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 le. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little bit tired. Obviously, Abzan uh, is also a very powerful deck these days. And this also hits two Jun colors, which is on the rise. And so being able to hold them back is worth something. But this card, I don't think, is quite as worthy of being in the main board because Sword of Fire and Ice will always do something for you. You can always at least deal two damage to a player and draw a card. If they have no cards in hand, discard does nothing. If you don't have any cards at hand, um, or if you can't tap out anyway for whatever reason, then untapping here does nothing. But the protection colors may be better. Maybe. Sword of Fire and Ice stops Flame Slash, Lightning Bolt, and the like. This stops Murderous Cut, and uh, obviously answers like Go for the Throat, <laughs> Doomblade, anything as such. Um, so that's my deck. And that's, that's it in its current incarnation. I would like to see more model the mixtures to replace Dispels. Uh, perhaps I have too many Cathedrals or, or something as such. The, the, color, the lack of colorless mana does sometimes end up being an issue. Only 14. Sometimes I will just have to mulligan a hand. Uh, because I'm keeping two lands, yes, but those lands happen to be, say, Ink Moth and Cathedral. So maybe I have too many. On the other hand, uh, I can play you off it, uh, you off it, you off of it, you off of it, you off of it. So it's not like I can't do things. If the hand is just perfect, then perhaps. Um, but I don't want to be put in a situation where I get two colorless sources and have to keep because Ink Moth and Spell Skite are what I'm running. I'd rather be able to have cantrips, have counterspells, that I can actually play. Um, and perhaps I would be running more disrupting shells. If I happen to have any, perhaps I would. Um, again, if you have any thoughts about this deck, please be sure to include them in the comments, or follow me on Twitter. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.